Hi, and welcome back to Historical Headstones with um, Rachel here. Hi. Hi, Rachel. And um, she's here with um, Etsy.com. Rachel oh, found it. Rachel found it. If you're interested in this upcoming film on Jesse James, it is probably the most, uh, I have to say, the most in-depth study on new information we have on Jesse James. It's just going to blow the, the top off of everything you've ever known, and we're kind of excited to share it with you today. Yes, we are. So we're going to start this um, video out, but we want you to know that everything you're about to see can be had in the book, Historical Headstones, Volume 1. 75% um, of what we're going to show you is is the minimum amount of what's of on Jesse James today. Over probably 150 pictures. You're in for one hell of a treat. You're going to learn things about Robert Ford that you've never seen before, his killer. You're going to uh, be introduced to Jesse, his entire family, his relatives, uh, Quanto Raiders, and so forth. Um, so let's begin the show. And here we have Jesse James in post-mortem. Yes, this is a new view from the taken from the right side. Now what's interesting about this is it's not known. It hasn't been uh, released to the public in the last, well, since its inception in 1882. Um, it clearly shows when I first this is my very first picture that I discovered this is what brought me to find this entire set this collection went up missing around 1934 as it ends with um, Bonnie and Clyde yeah but no Al Capone or anything like that um, I will tell you this uh, the backside it was uh, photography the photography is from Alban who is uh one of two photographers who actually filmed Jesse's death and post-mortem in Missouri back in 1882. So I can't tell you why only one picture of this exists. If you notice the bruising around his eye, uh, that's where the the bullet exited his temple. Um, uh, Sindenfelden, I believe is his last name, was the mortician at the time. He did a very good, uh, yes, a very good dressing job covering the wound and everything. But as you can see the in this area right here, it's very dark. Um, all I can think is, is that they didn't approve of this picture. Maybe the family didn't want this particular picture shown because of the wound. Or maybe the glass negative broke and that's what he was stuck with. Just the, uh, the view from the left side. You'll notice he's not wearing a scarf or anything. But there are known pictures and we're going to get right to it. Okay. In this picture here... Let me adjust this a little bit. We're we're trying something new here. Bear with us. Okay, in this picture here of the known, you'll notice uh, the similarities are striking. For example, there's a split in the eye, um, the eyebrow here on an angle. It's also seen here in the known. Very European uh, face, facial structure, totally Jesse James. As I said, for, for there to be a second death of a man who looks just like Jesse in the same year by the same photographer in the same state is, is, is like next to impossible. What do you think, Rachel? It's a very good liking and it's almost impossible for it to happen again. I'd have to say so myself. So mm. This was the second picture I came across. And this was... Um, Robert Ford and Dick Liddell. That's correct. Ford here looks like he, well, I would have to say this is taken right after he shot Jesse. He's got that worried look in his face. He's anxious. He's tired. He doesn't know how the crowd is going to react to him. Are they going to treat him as a, as a hero or are they going to want to lynch him? It looks like he might have his finger on a gun as well behind his leg. I don't think he trusted anybody at this point. Uh -uh. In fact, uh, his deal with Crittenden really fell apart kind of. He didn't get the full reward of five thousand dollars. He had received only five hundred of it. Some of the public didn't really like him for what he did. They did bad math him, squander him, and sure because uh, they considered him a coward. Those that didn't like him because he shot Jesse in the back of the head. Mm -hmm. However, I don't think Ford was a coward myself because I'll tell you something. When you go up against an outlaw, I, I like like Jesse James, and you're holding a gun to the back of his head. 
at a distance, you know that if your gun fails, if your hand trembles, if you miss, you're a dead man. You better run. <laughs> yeah, which is what they ended up doing anyway. I, I, they probably wet themselves when they actually shot them. Uh, <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, Z came running into the room, I understand, saying, oh, my God. And then she's like, uh, I guess uh, he was there with uh, his brother. Charlie. Charlie Ford and uh, he and uh, Robert himself exclaimed, uh, "We didn't do it! I swear to God, we didn't do it!" And then he ran out the door. Of course, we all know he did do it. Yeah. Um, Liddell here on the left was incarcerated, and um, it was uh, Robert Ford who who pled for his release, uh, convincing Crittenden that he uh, had turned state's evidence and he deserved to be set free and not charged with the murder, with the co co uh, spiracy murder of killing Jesse's favorite uh, cousin, Woodson Height. They had a shootout together, and ultimately Ford intervened and, and shot Height in the middle of a gun battle, and they buried his body in a shallow grave, and uh, I guess they got pardoned for it. Of course, at that point, when Jesse returned, it was just a matter of time before this man was going to have to... Uh, Fight the bullet himself if he didn't take out Jesse. As we move along here, this is the known picture. Very good liking. The likeness is on, is intuitive. It's it's just look at his his face. His hands are large. He became almost a bit of a celebrity to to many. As as we we spoke, hated by others. Yeah. Our next picture is Liddell. As you see on the right, that's Liddell during the Civil War. And on the left, about 15 years later. Great picture. Once again, we show you a close-up of our, our newest Jesse James. You see the uh, handiwork of Sidney Feldman here. Mm -hmm. The back of the card displays Alvin the photographer at 225 Edmond Street, St. Joseph, Missouri. Um, one of two photographers that I know of that was able to get a hold of uh, the rights to take his picture. Very convincing. There's no doubt in my mind that this is original. Where it's been for the last 150 years, I couldn't tell you. Okay. What do we, we have Frank James. Susan, his sister, and a mystery person. Okay, great. Great shot here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Okay, as you can see, Frank is on the right, and he sports large ears and a bushy mustache. This is right after the death of Jesse. Susan, Lavinia, his, their sister is in the middle. And as... Jesse Jr. wrote in a book that there was a, a strange man who uh, led the procession at the funeral. He showed up, he uh, gave a beautiful speech, and everybody thought, well, he's, he must be a friend of Jesse's, obviously, but everybody seemed to think that somebody else knew him in the crowd. As it turns out, nobody after he left knew who that man was. They couldn't put a finger on him. So we think this might be that mystery man that, that he that he spoke of. And anybody out there knows who this man is, please drop us a line at historicalheadstones.com. And we're constantly revising the book. It's a, it's a self-published book. So we only order a few copies at a time. Uh, no one's getting rich here. This is just, if I'm looking to sell a couple hundred copies, that'd be great. Just want to get the word out to the public that there's more than, than meets the eye in, in these... Uh, these Hollywood tabloid magazines yeah. that are supposedly showing you the Western, the, the the Western facts on life, but they're not. They're they know all about these pictures, and yet they uh, they choose to keep them from you. Uh, like I said, this came out in seventeen. I'm just now able to bring them to you in their entirety, uh, correctly uh, addressed chronological by age and by uh, name. But this 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 uh, man here is a mystery to us, and uh, but he was important enough out of the hundreds of people who showed up at the, at the funeral to be able to have his picture taken with Frank and Susan. So he's somebody with clout. Yes. Who we don't know. We'll figure it out. 
Okay, here is a picture of Susan Lavinia James, the sister of the of uh, Frank and Jesse, and the note on the right. Clearly, the resemblance is there. Not the same, uh, not taken the same year, obviously, but the same person for sure. We're going to try our best to show you uh, why we came to the, to the conclusions that we came to. And um, here's another close-up. Okay, this is a known photo of uh, Frank at Jesse's uh, coffin. It's exactly who we just showed you. Mm -hmm. Ah, the Morning Sisters. What do we have here, Rachel? We have Morning Sisters. We have Zorelda in the center, and then Ann Walton to the right, and Z Sisters, Nancy, Mary Elizabeth, and Lucy Francis. Okay, so these three sisters on the, uh, standing in the back are all part of Z, who's in the middle, mm -hmm. Jesse's uh, wife. And, of course, they're wearing black because Jesse was just murdered. And her trusted friend, her inseparable friend, Ann Ralston, obviously this is a sad moment for them. Yes. Very powerful picture. You won't find these pictures anywhere. No. And this is Z with her favorite sister, Nancy. Got it. Very touching she was closest to Nancy out of all her sisters. In fact, Nancy stands up for her wedding. Yes, she does. As long as well as Ann Ralston. Ann Ralston. This picture here, uh, you can see that Z is wearing a morning brooch, most likely that of Jesse. Now we have Jesse's mother. Yes, she's also in mourning, but this has nothing to do with Jesse's death. This is for her second husband, Benjamin. Okay, this is a very early embryo type, mm -hmm. and from the 1850s. Her second husband, uh, Benjamin Sims. He fell off of a horse. Yes, he fell off a horse. Ironic, ironically, her father died the same way. Yes. Now, what people may not know is that she was in the process of a divorce from Sims when this happened. Um... He had treated Jesse and Frank very badly. He often hit them and yelled at them, scolded them all the time. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, <laughs> we don't know, but... <laughs> they instigated it all. They may have They may have helped him fall off his horse. Oh, who knows? I, I, I wouldn't put it past him. But, right. uh, but she was in the process of divorce, and he died, and that's why she's in black. It's a great picture of Zarelda. Yes, it is. And there's another one of Zeralda. Yes, this is an earlier, early, earlier Dagerio photo. 1846, as a matter of fact. Yes. Uh, you won't find very many Dagerio types because they're the earliest forms of pictures, and they pretty much stopped using them around 1865. So here she is in her 20s. This collection is just loaded with pictures. Let me tell you something, people. You take selfies every day. You take them by the thousands every year. Uh, it's not hard to believe that one or two or three shots a year were taken of these people over the course of their lives. And they became uh, quite the amusement for people. They were, they didn't have the pastimes we have today. So right. it was, it, and they weren't, they were only expensive in the Dagerio format. By the time the embryos and tintypes came out, they became relatively cheap. Mm -hmm. And that's a Jesse James. Okay, early Early, maybe he's possibly six or seven years of age. 1855. Okay, we pinned it down to about 1855. Nice type. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, moving along, we have... Who is this? Reverend James? Billy James. Billy uh, James, or Billy Galbraith James. He is the uncle of Frank and Jesse. That would mean that Obviously, he's the brother of the father of Frank and Jesse, who died. Mm -hmm. uh, he's also a uh, a reverend, mm -hmm. as was Frank and Jesse's father. Yes. Um, he eventually marries, after trying to talk Jesse and Z out of marriage, he eventually condones it and actually does the marriage. Now, who, who this we... is Drury James. Okay, this is the other brother of Robert James, James Sully. Um, 
Robert Sally James was the father of Frank and Jesse. This is another uncle, Drury. Mm -hmm. He is the one, I believe. Yes, he is. Who uh, contacted his brother and said, hey, you need to come to California right now. And so he did. And uh, on the way out to California, um, Frank and Jesse's father contracted uh, Chloria. At least that's what they think. And he, uh, he died and was buried in a shallow grave, which I, I understand Jesse went looking for later in life, but I don't think he found it. Mm -mm. I don't think so either. Nice picture. Very early 1850s. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we got a pretty uh, upset. Jesse James. Jesse James. Okay. Um, he looks like he's pissed off here, doesn't he? Oh, wow. Yes, he does. He, uh, He's about 13 here. Possibly his mother made him comb his hair. What do you think? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but a very nice tin type, though. Very nice. Who do we have here? That's Susan. Sister Susan. <laughs> this, yeah, this is funny. This is almost as if he's a pimp. <laughs> yeah, it does look that way. What we have here is Jesse James front and center with a whip. And a staged hat, probably at a, a circus or carnival of some type. Yeah. Uh, photography studios did offer uh, attractions by by dressing you up in outfits that really didn't pertain to your to your normal life. In the back, we have his future wife here, uh -huh. Z, and her sister Nancy. Nancy. Great early shot. They're not yet married. Uh, Z, of course, is his first cousin. Yes. And Jesse looks like he's, uh, well, I don't look too happy there, but who knows what he's thinking. Here's another pose, very much like a uh, another popular pose he, he has taken, which we'll show you next. As you can see, he's about 17 or 18 on the right, and the note on the left, he's about 13 or 14. And the yellow line just it's just a reference point to show you that the lowest point of his earlobes intersect with his upper lip in both pictures. There's a lot of details here to follow. The nose, the chin. For me it's a it's a, it's pretty pretty damn close. In this we have a morning birch for our Susan, in which she died a very at the age of forty. Okay, when people died back in the day, they would construct these photos in, in the format of a brooch that they would wear right. on their either their blouse or their lapel. And uh, this is uh, Sister Susan, who who died, as did most of her children, I understand. Yes. Very sad. And this is Z. Another picture of Z. And here is... Yes. Jesse James, Charlie Ford, and... Woodson Height. Got it. What a picture. Definitely. Uh, if you notice something about Jesse on the left, he's always hiding that, that one fingertip. I yeah. think he does it uh, indiscriminately. I don't think he uh, is even self-aware that he does that. But whatever the photo takes place, he's usually hiding that damaged finger, which he had a uh, an accident earlier in his life where he uh, blew the very tip of it off. Not like Hollywood with the middle finger completely missing. That's an exaggeration. It was about one eighth of an inch of his index finger that he lost. And you'll notice in other pictures, he, he continues to do that throughout his life. Yes. And the, the center guy here, Charlie Ford, is the, the older brother. Of uh, Robert Ford. Robert Ford, who ends up, of course, killing Jesse. Yes. Um, Charlie ends up taking his own life later. Yes. Out of, I believe, guilt. Yes, it is. But a lot of things he, he really had a conscience and he wasn't happy about being known as a traitor to his uh his best friend there, Jesse James. What do we got here? Yeah, Frank, Frank and Jesse. Jesse. Unbelievable. This is the boys. They're getting they're becoming older and they're becoming more tough. I I personally wouldn't want to mess with these two. No. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Again, he's his finger, notice he's just curling away from the camera. And this is Z and Ann. Yes. 
this is an early picture. Um, Z is about nine years older than Anne, but they were best friends from the get-go. Yes. Anne becomes a school teacher, I understand. Yes. And, of course, they become close because they become the love interests of the two brothers, Frank and James. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Frank, James, and Jesse. Who do we have? Bloody Bill Anderson. Bloody Bill Anderson. Somebody here was upset and scratched on his face with his tin type. What were they thinking? Well, he was admired by some and hated by others. He, of course, earned his name Bloody Bill for a reason. Yeah. He, uh, he, he was for the Southern cause and he, yes. he murdered a lot of people. In his day, so as we move along to show you a comparison. Very good comparison. Yes. As you can see, it's the same man. Brand new. You won't find this in magazines. This picture has... And, and by the way, this, this picture is, is just... I, I gotta tell you, it, it is one of two that came out of the same location that the Lawrence Massacre took place. I can't believe... It's just within 10 miles of that of that city. Moving along, this is the other picture I was speaking of. Yes, I cannot identify the 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 four on the left, but the two over here. Obviously, the one that's farther right is Greg George Maddox. George Maddox, yes, and over here is William Clark Contrell. Contrell, that's right. And uh, if you guys can help me figure out out there, like I said, we're constantly updating. Would love to know the names of these other four. And of course, we're going to show you comparisons so you see how we came to this conclusion. This is the first comp on... William Contrell. Yes, and on the, the left is the known. Mm -hmm. And there's George Maddox. Maddox, even in this picture, with, with he's less flamboyant on the right, but he still has that air of aristocracy. Yes, he, he does. <laughs> Very I, much I look so. at him; he almost looks like he's uh, <laughs> gonna gonna come out of a play or something. Right. <laughs> but uh, same, same, same exact face. Very, very distinct. The nose, the lips, everything about him. Here is a also a new picture of William Clark. Quantrill, and he uh, here is very candid shot. Very nice, handsome young man. No, oh, yes, very. But he was a killer, and he uh, he conducted the raid on Lawrence, and I believe eighteen sixty three, where uh, one hundred and fifty men and boys, young boys, were murdered. And here is the comparison for this particular picture. Use your own eyes, judge for yourself. I say it's a no-brainer. Me too. Very happy to have it here in this collection. Next up is a very um, candid shot inside the house. Look at the wallpaper on this. It's on the ceiling. It's everywhere. It's very big. Kind of gaudy. It, it is. It is. It's, big, but it, it's it very. Is what it is. It's Victorian times. This is what they did. And um, who do we have in this picture? Well, far right we have Susan. Susan Lavinia is right here on, on the far right. And then in back on the right is Frank James. Frank is behind her. Yes, and then we got Jesse who's next to Frank. But, and then in front of him we have Z. Z holding a kitten. Yes. You know what? If you look at Jesse, he, he's goofing around with Z's neck or her hair, and she's liking it. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, to the far left we have yeah. Anne Ralston, who's not very happy. No, because she's not getting the attention, I would say, from Frank, who's way over here by Jesse and Susan. Uh, so she looks like she's in another... No, Charlie seems to be living up, because he's laughing. Well, he knows what Jesse's doing to her, so he's... He... And, of course, Charlie is married to Z's sister, Nancy, Nancy, and he stands up as one of the uh, grooms in yes. the, the, the wedding, which we do have. Uh, whatever you were told about their little farmhouse wedding... I'm, it may have happened, just as you heard, but they definitely had a real full-blown wedding. I can tell you myself, I, I eloped when I married, and I had a second wedding when I returned in a church. So it's not uncommon that this gets done. Okay, this is a blow-up picture of 
the uh, Samuel Rostin's farmhouse, I believe. Yes. Uh, the picture itself is much larger, but the people in it were small, so I had to zoom in like this. Who we have on the on the far right is Dr. Samuel. Yes. Okay. Reuben Samuel was the second husband of Zarala, who's on the far left. Now, let's speak about the children in the middle. I'm sorry, he was the third husband of Zarala, final husband of Zarala. And they had children together. So all these kids would be half brothers and sisters to Frank and Jesse. Yes. The outlaws. So let's start with the, in the seat in this little chair. Who who is this young child? That's Fanny. Fanny is standing up in the chair. Sarah. Sarah. Then Archie. Little Archie. He now he gets killed when he's age nine. Here he's less than nine. So when when the Pinkertons throw a a uh, sort of bomb device inside the house, trying to flush out the brothers who aren't even home, Zorelda picks it up and loses her arm when it goes off, and Archie here loses his life. And of How course, sad. very sad. And uh, very careless. Yes. The public is outraged when they hear what happens, but nobody's really held accountable. And who do we have to the far? And that's John. John. You'll see John coming up in the next picture as well. Uh, so these are the four half-brothers and sisters of the James brothers. And do we have a name for the dog? No, we don't. We'll call him Fido. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along. <laughs> we John. A tin type of John. Starting to get older. Yes. There he is again. He's seated with his uh mother his, and sister. His mother and sister Sarah, correct? Yes. Okay, great tin type. We we have this one down for eighteen sixty eight. Yes. Zarella still has both her arms. Correct. And as you see that won't always be the case. We have new pictures to show you. Ah. Okay, this is the Ann Ralston James family album. When you see this type of paper around it, it has over 50 pictures in it. And it contains a lot of the uh, Ralston family, including her mother, father, and her grandmother. grandmother and grandfather. And we're not going to show every picture, but we're going to show what we can here today. So this is her father. Samuel Ralston. So most of you have probably never seen him. This is what he looks like. And this is her mother. Mary Catherine Hill Ralston. Mary Catherine Hill Ralston. Mm -hmm. And coming and up. This is the this is the grandmother of Aunt, of Anne Ralston and Moberly Hill. So I can see the resemblance. Mm -hmm. And this is another picture of Anne's mother. Anne's mother. So this this particular book is really fascinating because it has it so many pictures. Oh, there's George Maddox again. George Maddox. Okay, uh, he. This is what's interesting about this picture is he was part of the Lawrence raid. Mm, yeah. And he was the only one who was ever brought to trial. And during the trial, they deliberated, and during the deliberation, he decided he wasn't going to stick around to find out. His whether, wife helped him escape, did she not? He, uh, that's correct. She was waiting outside with a horse. He, he he jumped out a window, I believe, and they took off. Ironically, the jury resumed, and they acquitted him for the uh, Lawrence raid. So he was going to be found innocent or not guilty anyway. But he, <laughs> you know, there's no telling. I, I, I What must have been going through his head was if he's guilty, they're going to hang him. And he didn't want to stick around to find out. Who do we have here? William Clark Quantrill, Quantrill there again. Uh, another picture of the Quantrill leader. And that's Ellen Palmer. Ellen Palmer was one of the uh, early members of Quantrill's Raiders. He he rode alongside Frank and Jesse. He ends up marrying Frank and Jesse's sister, Susan Lavinia James, and he becomes a member of the family. And you will see more on him as we go. Here is a candid shot of Z. Yes. Very pretty. And here is one of Frank. Frank James, a tin type, I believe. Yes, it is. 1873. So he's about 30 years of age here. Very nice. And 
And here is Sister Susan Lavinia. She's older now. She's already married to uh, Alan Palmer, and she had many children. Yes. Tell me about her children. All of them died but one that lived to the age of 92. And that due to the fact that she's given children, that's part of her demise, too. That is death happened. very, very sad to hear that she died at around the age 40. Um, but that's how tough times were back in the Yes. Uh, Most children back then didn't live out of infancy. Some do, just dependent on circumstances. Understood. And here is a great, great shot. If you notice at the bottom of the card, it's written in German. Will Highland, Rostock, I am. It says, uh, Kramis Strauss, 13 So it's completely written in German, which is what the Ralston family was. Yes. And you'll see that Anne is front and center. She's very young here, maybe 18 at best. Yes. Her mother and father are seated next to her, and she's just about to go run off with Frank, who the parents did not really approve of because of his notorious background. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't either, <laughs> to be honest. Well, that would, okay, so we're looking at Frank James's uh, future wife and, and future in laws. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a great shot of uh, Annie Ralston with her mother. Yes. Very close, close family. And there's a nice shot of Anne, too. Yes. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's Z and Anne. Inseparable, these two. Of course, they're always on the move. They're married to the brothers that are wanted by the law. And what can you expect but them to not be close? They, right. they knew all the secrets. They had all the aliases. They would not turn on them either. They wouldn't do it in a second. And and Z, I believe, is responsible for a lot of these pictures. There she is, young. It looks like she's at Coney Island. <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like she's... But she doesn't look like she's too amused. Here is a picture right out of the book. So you're going to find all these pictures in the book. Um, Z and, of course, her husband... Jesse James. And once again, Jesse's hiding his finger. Yes. He's very self-conscious of that. Here's a great shot of the three sisters. Or yes. actually, they're not all three sisters. It's Anne Z and Nancy. So Anne Ralston is, is, is in the middle. And we have Jesse's wife, Z, on the far right. And, of course, her favorite sister, Catherine. Oh, is, that, is that right? On the left. Nancy. Nancy, that's right. Nancy on the left. Both of these women are in Z's upcoming wedding. What do we have here? They're sitting out having a picnic. Unreal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me dive into this one. On the far right is Ann Ralston. And she's leaning over on her best friend, Z Mims James. Only she's probably not James quite yet. She's not married. And next to her is her sister. Is, is just, uh, I'm sorry. It's Jesse and Frank's sister, Susan. Susan. And uh, these three. Then tell. that's Mary. Mary here. Lucy, uh-huh. Lucy in the center. And then um, Nancy is the far left. Got it. So these are all Mim's sisters. Yes. To Z. Yes. And you can tell they are related. Yes, they are. <laughs> Fantastic image, would you, would you yes, agree? Yes, I agree. Okay. And here we have Zerelda, Z, and Nancy. And Nancy's with her daughter, Zena. Let's take a look here. Okay, so Zerelda still has her arms, so we have this peg before 1875. That is correct. I Probably. believe it's about 1873. Okay, sounds about right. And then, so that this little child would be the granddaughter yes. to Zerelda, mm -hmm. and yet she would also be the, the niece. To Z. Right. Nice photo. Wow. The wedding. The wedding. Here it is. Okay. For those of you out there who are doubting, I'm going to change your opinion. Uh, of course, we all heard that she got married in the farmhouse. Very simple wedding. But Jesse had money. Jesse and Frank were looting. <laughs> Jesse on Far his Far before this. <laughs> Jesse on his honeymoon took his entire gang with him 
uh, it's a fact. They robbed the stagecoach, actually, just uh, the day after they got married. So if you look at this picture here, we have Jesse standing in the far back. Mm -hmm. Brother Frank and Charles McBride are the best men. And below, we have Z in the center mm -hmm. with Ann Ralston to the far right. And her sister to the Nancy Mims McBride, who's married to Charles, to the for the to the far left. And this is the real deal. Yes, it is. And we're gonna show you why. Take a good look. You won't find this anywhere. This is a phenomenal picture. Yes, it is a phenomenal picture. Okay, this is what you had to deal with for the last hundred years. The known sketch on the far right. What do you think, Rachel? It's very comparable. It's a very good likeness. It's it's a dead ringer. I I don't know if I could draw it better than this artist did. Probably from memory as well. <laughs> Very good. Next, this is the, the complete wedding sketch that we've had a look at for the last hundred years, and this is the real deal. Strikingly similar. As we move along. Ah, oh, the man who married them. Yes, Uncle Billy James, the Reverend William Galbraith. James, brother, once again, another picture of the brother of their father. Mm -hmm. Uncle Billy tried to tell him not to do it, but they insisted, so he said, well, let me be the one to do it. And he's sporting gold in his ear. I noticed that. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. He's, he's well ahead of his times. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking at rock star material here. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a glass ambryotype. Very happy to, to bring it to you today. And here is a comparison to his brother. Mm -hmm. So these are brothers. This is believed to be Jesse and Frank's father, the known on the right. Following that, we have... James, Charlie, and Frank. Okay, seated in front are Jesse and Frank. If the picture is blurred. Sorry about that. It's the way it was taken. With Charles Ford in the back. Very nice picture. Mm -hmm. uh, All right, we have uh, the the group together. The couples. Yes, and Frank is awfully handsome. Looks like Clark Kent, doesn't he? Doesn't he? He sure does. <laughs> that to me, that's that's Superman right there. Uh, what happened to his hair and everything? I don't know, but behind him was almost a scary looking, and Ralston James, who uh, looks like she's got a permanent on her head. You would think. But. That's not possible, being that this is 1870s. And, of course, Z is in the picture with her hands upon her man, mm -hmm. Jesse James, who uh, once again curls his finger inward so you can't see the tip of it. Moving along, we have... Zerelda. Probably the earliest known image of Zerelda in Dag uh, Daguerreotype. 1875, we believe. At this point, the stereotypes were pretty much phased out, but some people just insisted on them. Some people still practiced every now and then. I guess she probably requested to be a dead stereotype. And that's a picture of her when she lost her arm. And she lost her arm at the same length. It was right, right above the elbow. And it's a beautiful image of her, but she, of course, suffered the loss of her son Archie. Little Archie at age nine. This is Zarella at age 50. Only here at Historical Headstones will you see such a, a new image. And of course, we decided to give you a picture of the comp, the known, the that comparable. The known one is a dead ringer. Just look at the eyes, nose, and the mouth. Yep. Same jaw star structure, right? the face, everything. And again, the, the length of the arm that was taken off, and the length is even the same. You know, some people lose it at the shoulder, some people just lose the hand, but unfortunately she lost the better part of it. So I'd say there's probably 30 years difference here. And then we have another picture of Zarella in our collection, and we're going to show it against Unknown. That is a, a, a perfect match. Again, we claim it to be the same lady, but not taken the same year. Obviously, your high school pictures will be different than your adult pictures and so forth. Yep. But it's not too hard to see. No, it's not. These are the same person. Oh, no. Okay. We got a problem here. We got Robert Forrest sitting between his killing trophies. 
Yes. These, oh my God. Who, who would even think such a picture exists? Here we have 15-year-old Robert Ford wearing this very distinct straw hat. That's the style he ends up wearing a lot. Yes. And he is saying between two, two of his prize trophy-killing uh, best friends, who would be Woodson Hyde on the right, who he murders first, followed by his Jesse uh, James. the man he admired most, Jesse James, on the left. He ends up killing both of these men, and that's the last he ever kills of anybody. And you'll notice that Jesse, again, curls his finger out of view. Um, Woodson Hyde was Jesse's closest cousin. cousin. And this picture is just unbelievable. Yeah, it is. It really is. But you know what? It doesn't really surprise me because Ford himself really admired Jesse at that young age. And I think Jesse probably enjoyed the fact that, unlike, yeah, the, mo uh, unlike, uh, unlike the movie where he kind of dissed, the, dissed him away a lot, I think he actually uh, felt a, a, a closeness to him because he was admired by him so much. Here's Woodson Height once again. We got several pictures of Wood Height. Right. And that's a morning brooch of Woodson Height that his love interest made. Okay, this lady here is obviously connected to Woodson Height. We have her in several pictures. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you a few of them. And there's one that got away that I, uh, I didn't get. And it showed Woodson Height as a groom. I'm sorry, as a best man. And it showed this unknown lady as the bridesmaid. And they were a very cute couple together, standing up for a wedding of, of yet another friend that we didn't know who it was. Right. Unfortunately, I didn't get the picture. Uh, something something fell apart in the transaction. I think the, the lady became very ill. And so uh, I left that one alone. But this is the love interest of Woodson Height. There she is again. Look Very at that. Nice yeah, look at the head on that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm just saying, she, she's a, a lovely lady. Her hair is down up. She's got wonderful, look at the, the Victorian. The, the Victorian clothes, clothing is out. It's, it's undeniably probably some of the most. Best. Best, finest clothing you can find. Yeah. Women today, they don't, they don't dress like this. No, we don't. Uh. A lot of sweatshirts and t-shirts and shorts and it's just not like back Holy in the day. Jeans. They really, they really, uh, they really dressed to the nines here. Yes, they did. So we're looking at who we, we believe to be Wood Heights love interest. Yes. And there's Wood Height. Wood Height once again. Handsome big picture. Not too many known pictures of him, but well, I'll tell you, this is why they're here. The last picture we have of Woodson Height is when he's probably at his oldest point with his girl once again in the background. Moving along, we Created have... It. Oh. Okay, this is uh, the governor of Missouri, Thomas Crittenden. He is responsible for the $5,000 bounty on Jesse's head. He's also collaborating with, with Robert, Ford. Robert Ford. Dead or alive, he wants... Uh, the James brothers brought to justice. I'll tell you something about this. Can you imagine today a, a, a governor putting a bounty on somebody's head? Uh-uh. No. <laughs> well, in 1881, it was, I guess, the norm. Yeah, well, obviously. It wouldn't fly today. No, it wouldn't. I'm sure they still do it in private. <laughs> Probably do. <laughs> but, but not publicly announcing, you know, putting a reward up for the capture or Removal of this outlaw. Outlaw. So we move on, and we have a new edition of Doctor Samuel Rubin. I'm sorry, Doctor Rubin Samuel. Jesse and Frank's uh, third stepfather. stepfather. He was very kind to the boys. They loved him. He taught them how to shoot. He taught them how to ride horses, and they got along great. The picture on the right is the nose. I gotta tell you, it's probably a sketch for painting, but the crook in his nose, the length of his nose, the little lips, mm -hmm. it's totally him. All the features. Is there are any doubt? Like... Is there any doubt in your mind? No. Th this picture alone should, should show you the, the depth that the collector that we still don't know who did this, the early twentieth century collector, went through 
painstaking, lifelong pursuit to show us not only the outlaws, but those that who surrounded the outlaws and made their lives who they were. Here is that hill again. Yes, they're drinking beer. Are they? Yeah. So they're all downing suds on a day here. <laughs> yes. uh, so to the far right, we have Sister Susan. Yes. And then we have Z in the middle. Yes. Look at her, how happy she looks. Her yes, cheeks are bulging. Very much side. Then Jesse, of course, he's, he's kicked back. He's got a bottle of suds. Next to him, we it's have... Charlie laughing it up. Yep. He's enjoying the moment. He's also one of the best men in the, in the wedding, as well as his wife here. Yes. He's married to uh, Nancy. Nancy Mims. And I can notice that the picnic basket, there is a jar of pickles with a fork stuck in it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this, this, is, this was it. This is, it doesn't get better than this. No, it doesn't. And we had this pegged to about 1878. Is that right? Yes. But we could be off a little bit. Moving along. Mm. Okay, people. You're now witnessing the Holy Grail of the James gang. Um, the year is 1876. We know this because it was taken in Tiffin, Ohio, by Cor and Freeze, who only operated there from 75 through 76. Uh, the interesting thing on this is they did go to Ohio more than once. And there, I'm not going to go into great detail, but there is a farm roughly 25 miles away where I believe, personally, that having having Jesse having belonged to the uh, Knights of the Golden Circle, there's said to be a uh, rumored treasure there on this farm just 25 miles from Tiffin. Uh, farm, is, I forget, it's like a 100-acre farm. And... Uh, the money was going to be used for the resurrection of the, the Southern Recovery. Um, is it still there? I don't know. But I can tell you this, they definitely had ties to Ohio. And they were there in Tiffin in 1875 or 76. Now, why do I call this the Holy Grail? Well, if you were the uh, gang leader, if you were the leader of a gang, where would you be placed? Front and center. And this is the first picture you actually get to see Jesse's hands in full, including the finger. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, he, yeah, he's sending us a message, no doubt. <laughs> he he was very, very private. He liked his identity to be kept as Mr. Howard. But uh, here he's sending us a message. Now, if you look closely at this picture, it is very well executed. You have Dick Liddell on the far left. And his wife is seated next to him, Manny Collins. Yes. Bell Val Heller, it looks like to be the I interest of maybe Fletch at the time. Yes. Fletch Taylor's arm is missing. And the photographer very tactfully put him in such a position where you won't notice that his arm is missing. So he, he put it so it was hidden from the picture. His other arm shows a very distinct vein pattern. Yes. Here. As you can see, if there's any nodes that show so that ever surface that show this pattern, it will con conclusively prove that this is the same man. Uh, biometric vein patterns are a 21st century technology. They're likened to a palm print or a fingerprint, as no two people have the same. No. Now, next to uh, Fletch Taylor is Ann Ralston, and she is. With Frank over here on the far right, mm -hmm. uh, you have Alan Palmer. Alan Palmer with his new bride, Susan. Susan Palmer James, formerly James, and uh, seated in front you have Z, his wife Z, uh, wife of Jesse Woodson James. So, just probably like I said, you're looking at what they really looked like at this time. And now we're going to show you the comps. Liddell. Very tall. This is him during the Civil War on the right. Fletch Taylor. Dead ringer. Mm -hmm. Here we have Ann Ralston on the right. Yes. The one in the picture we just showed on the left. Right. 
Ellen Palmer. Now, what I did here is I showed. I I have we have both of these pictures in our in our collection. We did show you a note because very few of them, and it's just a sketch. What we wanted to show you is that this collection is connected. So for this particular picture, we showed you another we have of Palmer later in life on the right. As you can see, it's the same exact guy, um, probably about 10, 10 years older on the right. So not even that, five years maybe. Here we have Susan and the known on the right. She's the youngest of the group. And Frank. What do you think of that one, Rachel? Very nice. Dead Ringer. Yes. Um, and that's Maddie Collins. Maddie Collins is known on the right. We're not looking at a blonde here with pigtails. We're not looking at a, at, a, at a very large woman. We're looking at a middle-sized woman with dark hair. The features are incredible. Yes, it is. Now, for those of you, uh, we're going to move on to this one first. This is uh, the known sketch of the Z. And this is the Z on the left. As you can see, I couldn't draw it better myself. Nope. <laughs> and then Jesse here. Yes. And the tin type. Now, you know, the tin types are reverse images. And if you notice, the part is on the opposite side, as it would be, because... The cabinet card on the left is true to life. So that's where he actually parted his hair. Whereas tin types, embryo types, the daguerreo types are all reverse images. But the similarities here, even with the picture being I right. flip, I, you know, it's just uncanny. Here's a split view, 50-50. Now, for those of you who think, oh, it's just a random shot, they just happened to to be other people that look like them. Well, it goes one step further. If that were the case, why is it that all the people who look very much like who we claim, all the friends are on the left side? That is, people who are not related to, to the James family through marriage or bloodline. Yeah. You follow? Yes. And then everybody who is either married or a direct descendant of each other is on the far right. It's not a chance that that would possibly happen. This is a, this is how it would work. I mean, Jesse front and center, the fact that all the uh, non-relatives huddled together on the left, this is a 100% viewer, you in the seat watching this now. You watching from your couch, you are not wasting your time. This is not some eBay shenanigans. This is the real deal. Uh, go ahead and, and for those of you who subscribe to some of these magazines that put out pictures and talk about, they rehash the same old nonsense year of the year. Go ahead and ask them why they're not talking about pictures like this. Because I'm available. All they got to do is ring my, tell me what they want to do. I want to share this with the whole world. This is a, probably the most awesome picture in my, my mind of Jesse James and yes. his gang. It's just phenomenal what we have here. And I think it needs to be studied by scholars and appreciated, not overlooked while you're looking at things like Kurt Russell and Val Kimmer every time you pick up a magazine on the cover. This is the real deal. And your grandfather... And your fathers would have loved to have seen this in their day. Now we talk about Jesse's fingers. Well, this is the message he's sending us. As you clearly see, the fingers, the fingers here are distorted. One is distorted. And he grew the nail extra long to show you, to show you why um, he made, how he made up for the difference. And this is him telling you, I am Jesse James. I am here. Next we have from the uh, Ann Ralston, Frank James family album. We have a picture of, who is this? Robert Franklin. Robert Franklin was the only son of Annie and, and uh, Frank James. He's healthy. We have pictures of him growing up. And the reason I mention he's healthy is because, unfortunately... That wasn't the case for 
The twins. The twins born. Gould and Montgomery. Gould and Montgomery were the twin boys of Z and Jesse James. Yes. As you can see in this face, and I can't tell you for sure which is Gould. In fact, I really can't prove this to be the children other than I can tell you this. I can prove it came from the same collection. This is how I know it, it is the, the James children because it wasn't piecemeal together. This one didn't come from California. The other one came from Ohio. The other one came from Florida. This all came from one source. So, and you can see the, the kid has a lot of jaundice on his face. He's got bruising on his head. It must have been a very tough labor, would you yes, say? it was. Uh, I, I, it's amazing that Z survived, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people think that these children died at birth. Some people think that they died with uh, on the same day, a year, you know, a, yeah. a month later. Truth is, they both died within the first year, but not the same day. So the tragedy was the heart, the heartfelt sorrow had to be prolonged. It it's makes a shame. Us, this picture here shows first time you're going to see Z holding her deceased child. I don't know which of the two it would be. But I can tell you this, the hurt in her face is real. This is a very powerful image. I respect Z like never before, having gone through this collection. She is the reason for these photos, in most cases. I can tell you that um, to lose a child has to be the most painful thing. And she, it happens to her twice in the same year. Yes. And so I wanted to share that with you here today. Um, back in Victorian times, it was very common to photograph those who died for memory purposes. Here we have Ann Ralston, who was, I'm sure she was the godmother of the twins. And the reason I say that is if I blow this up, you start to look at her morning brooch. It is a morning brooch. It's not the twins. It shows two heads. Obviously, it must be the, the children. So, Godmother Ann Ralston, very close to Z, felt equally the pain that Z was suffering and Jesse. Next photo. This is a, a comparable. We call them comps. Very uh, good. A known Ann Ralston to the right. And, of course, this latest image of uh, Annie on the left with the twins on her brooch. Is there any doubt that this, at this point of the game, you have to understand something. This is legit. This collection, I know it sounds like some lost treasure somebody found or made up, but I never expected to come across this in my life. I, I painstakingly piecemealed it back together. They were being sold off as nobody's, people were buying them all around. I, I mean, I have receipts from Switzerland, from Australia, from the from the UK. I have it right here. I have it from Italy. I have it right here in the United States. I bought back so many pictures. They paid five bucks for them just because they liked them. And I would often pay 10 to 20 times the price to get it back. I explained that they all belonged together. They were together for 100 years. And I, and I was uh, a genealogist, amateur, and I wanted to keep them together and, and Surprisingly, 99% were happy to help, and I appreciate it, and that's why it's here today. Um, this is definitely Anne. Anne Ralston. You nailed it. So so this collection, you're looking at the real-life pictures. This, uh, It's kind of redundant to show you this. The baby's eyes are glossed over. The other twin. This will be the second death. Whether it be Gould and Montgomery doesn't really matter at this point. It just shows that they they did have these children and they did die at separate times. Yes. Moving along, we have Frank with Frank and Annie together. Robert with little uh, Robert Alexander. Franklin. Oh, Franklin. Sorry, Robert Franklin. <laughs> Alexander Frank is the senior James up here. I got yes. confused. I make mistakes. Bear with me. We're learning as we go as well. And Robert Franklin growing up. He's starting to move. He's about five here, maybe four. 
Oh, let's play in the snow. Okay, it looks like we have a very outdoor candid shot of Frank and Jesse James. Jesse's standing. Frank is crouched down. Maybe he just dodges a snowball. Who knows? <laughs> uh, I, I noticed this is outdoors at probably a park. So if somebody out there may know the location. There's, there's obviously a, a fountain here, a stone fountain made here. And it's probably in Missouri, but I can't say for sure. Kids up here watching the photographer. Just a nice outdoor. It just shows that these, these were real people, just like you and I. Yes. Who were law-abiding citizens for the most most of the time. <laughs> except all for, the time. Except for when they weren't. And then here is, they were always on the move. This is probably one of the rented houses they had at some point. Yes. Under the alias of uh, John Howard, I believe. Um, there's Jesse James. Mm-hmm. Next to him, you have. You have. Oh. You have his. I'm sorry. Let's move over here. Okay, you have next to Jesse, his son Jesse Jr. Mm -hmm. In the wagon is Mary. Little Mary. She's almost unseeable. <laughs> she yeah. blends. She blends in. And then you have Z in the background here yes. behind the chair. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, very uh, surprise shot to have taken. Um, Jesse probably has his guns in his pocket. Maybe that's what he's holding. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. This picture likely was taken by Jesse himself. Uh, it's right around the time Jesse dies. Uh, as you can see, his son is only uh, about five years of age. Yes. And this pony he's sitting on is really studded out here. It's something that Jesse would probably do. Um... Who doesn't like a picture like that? I wouldn't. A mother wouldn't, that's for sure. That's why he had it taken. Ah. Okay, this picture here is an embryotype or a colonial positive. At the time, these were about ready to phase out. This one goes as late as 1881. This shows Jesse's family photo with his two children. The last photo, we believe, is was, that was ever taken. Of his family together like this. Uh, you'll notice on the far right. His eldest son is dressed like a girl. Uh, this is not to be laughed at. Back between the Civil War time. And up till about 1920. They did dress boys and girls. In the opposite uh, sex clothing. It's whatever was convenient. And here he's holding on to his daughter. Who's dressed like a little boy. Uh, once again, I, I want to point out that when Jesse Jr. here on the right grows up, he does the same thing with his children. He dresses his daughter like a boy, and you'll see that in the next few pictures. So here's Jesse. He's starting to grow his beard out. He's about a year and a half from death. Z is starting to put weight on. This is what an embryo type looks like. It's basically... A daguerreotype would be uh, a copper, uh, a uh, silver-coated sheet of copper. Very durable, but very susceptible to scratches. But an ambryotype like this one is basically uh, a negative on glass. And when you put a dark background behind it, everything flips as far as the coloring. And you can see the image. But again, if you if you drop this or crack it, that, that's it. It's one of one. You're not going to get copies. I figured uh, for most people who don't know that, I wanted to show them this. The the, the, the predecessor, or I'm sorry, the uh, successor to this would be the, the tin type, which was very durable and cheap. And the card of this day and the cabinet card were all printed pretty much on paper. Here we have... Anne, Jesse, and Z. Got it. The trio. The ladies are putting on a little weight there. I guess their nerves are really high because Jesse's very close to getting caught at this point. He's sporting his beard now at about 75% of what it's going to end up being. Mm -hmm. He's probably less than six months from death. Would you say? Yes. And again, Jesse has a very distinctive vein pattern showing. I, I bring this up because I would like to discuss with those who know his pattern from other pictures, that this Y shape that breaks off into like a tree branch, if found on another picture, could conclusively prove that this is the real deal. 
beyond any expert opinion, biometrics will trump it every time. It's it's just one of those forensic studies that are, are slowly but surely going to catch on. You're going to see. Um, I hope to help bring it to the to the front playing field. Um, so as we move on, this is a triple combined picture of our Jesse James, early 1881, his beard starting to fall in. Later, 1881, as you just saw, and of course, the known funeral picture. Rachel, what do you think of this picture? And I'll be completely honest with me. When you see this, does it strike you as, as being the same person or? Yes, it does. Just like that, yes. You're just absolutely yeah, sure. Yeah, positive because of the, face, the shape of the face, the eyes, the nose, uh, the mouth, everything. Everything seems to just be too, too uh, close for uh, yeah. coincidence. I, I have to agree with you on this. This is very powerful in my mind. You know, the whole town turned out for this funeral. Those who think he moved on and lived to be 103, well, no. good luck with that. I just, I can't believe a whole town is going to uh, succumb to such a, uh, I don't know, charade. Let's look, move on to this picture here. And, of course, this is our final picture of him in death, as we showed you earlier. The, the latest view of him from his, from the right side as you face him. What do we have going on here? Frank, when he turned in to um, state, went to trial and he turned himself in, decided he was acquitted for everything and decided to move on to be a farmer and live a legitimate lifestyle. Okay, okay. so Frank basically, this is probably anywhere from uh, up to about 18 years later. This is him long after the trial. Yes. Turn of the century. He's on probably his own farm for all I know. Yeah. But that's not all he did. He he even tried his luck at being a sous, sous salesman. Mm -hmm. He also worked. Let's see if I can adjust this. He also worked as an usher at a, at a, at a uh, movie theater house. Can you imagine the great Frank James seating you in, to your chair, showing you to your chair? <laughs> it just, what, what a heck of a thing. Take a look at that face. Those of you who know who these three other men are, feel free to drop us a line. At, we're at historicalhandstones.com. We'd love to add it to the book. If we can back it up with what you say, we would be very appreciative. Here's another candid shot of uh, Frank. He looks like he turned in his Colt 45s for a cucumber. A cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> it is laughable, but... <laughs> This is the, the, the man who held up trains, and it's just, it's unbelievable. He's legendary in his own time. Yes, he is. Frank and Ann. Mm hmm Now he's probably in his late 50s, early 60s. Very nice picture of the two. Very, very, very nice. But they, of course, they, life goes on, and uh, time passes. Yep. And here we have Sally, Sally Mims. Alan Hazard Palmer and Zemans. Okay. This is obviously after the death of Alan Palmer's wife, which was Susan James, and after the death of Jesse James. What these two have in common are they are both widowed now. Yes. Uh, they were related through marriage to the James family. Very powerful picture, if you ask me. Yes, it is. They're survivors. And, and they both lost the loves of their lives, and they both share the legacy of the James gang. Interesting. Quite. And, of course, we just show you a quick shot that we do put these pictures into book format. You will receive, if you get, get our book, you'll be finding that the information, when they were born, when they died, and the medium that was used to take the photo, and, and more about them below on every page helps chronologically put this uh, whole story into as into a, a comprehensive understanding of what we have here uh, this is another turn of the century picture probably after 1900 1903 1905 of Uncle Frank Annie. and Annie up on a porch with Jesse Jr. now grown up Jesse Jr. went on to become a lawyer. He went to school in Kansas. Was it Kansas 
Or was it California? No, he went to, if I'm not mistaken, I think he went to school in Cowlands and then he moved to California to put, um... He practiced in California. Yes, he practiced in okay, California. Okay, so he, he ends up getting married. He's got a family he started with, of his own. And then whoever put this collection together originally, they made sure to show you that. And here we are with possibly uh, Z's believed last picture. Mm -hmm. She dies around the age 50, is that right? Yes, and in here it shows that this picture was taken four years after, put together four years after she had passed away. Okay, so yes, um, it, it, he used it as a kind of a postcard. Yes. And on the back he wrote, uh, Jesse Jr. wrote, uh, yours, me and yours truly. Mm -hmm. uh, he loved his mother. And uh, it's just a, a great picture of seeing her memory kept alive by this young man here who basically had to had to help feed the family after the loss of his father. So right, moving along, another picture of uh, Jesse Jr. growing up, mm -hmm. and this is him with his wife Stella Francis. Yes, and little. Yeah. Lucy Marta and Josephine Francis. If you notice, the youngest child is dressed like a boy, he got a boy's haircut. Again, it was accepted up until about 1920. It was, it was just a practice that they did. Yes. Uh, even President Roosevelt has a very famous picture of having been dressed as a girl. <laughs> Check it out. I can't show it here right now, but it's it's a true true case, and people remark that. Teddy Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, was, uh, of course, one of our, I think he was a four-term president who uh, was once dressed as a girl because that's what they did. And Tim here uh, was what they called him in the book that he wrote. For, for years, he didn't know his true name was, true last name was James. Uh, he thought it was Howard. Howard was an alias. But Jesse Jr. writes about that in, the, in his book about his father and how hard he had it after his father died. Um, he basically went to work at a young age. And uh, he here, here he is dressing up one of his own children as his father did in the opposite type of garment. This here is a real photo known on the, on the left of Stella, Lucille, and Josephine. His, his wife and two children. And then the newest one we just showed you on the right, just four years later, based on the age of the children here, it definitely Stella is the easiest to see as being Stella. That's, that's the beauty about having an adult in a picture when you have children because children are tough because they're, they're changing all the time. Okay, this here is the last known picture of Frank. Frank and Anne, before Frank dies. Yes, he, now the reason I say this is because if you look over here, where my cursor is, it's dated the Bronx, New York, 1915. Mm -hmm. Okay, Frank dies in February the 18th of 1915. Yes, so this has to be within days of his death. I'm going to zoom in here. If you'll notice, Frank has a flat area on his skull here. Mm -hmm. uh, I only point that out because you're going to see it in a, in a comp coming up next. Annie's quite reserved. She lives the longest. When did she pass away? 1944. 44. So she she outlives uh, basically the, of the four main characters, uh, which would be Frank, Anne, Jesse, and Z. She outlives them all. She was the youngest. Makes perfect sense. She definitely outlived Z by a number of years. And here is the known comp on the uh, right. There's about 17 years difference in age. You still got the big ears. It's getting bigger over here. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll notice the same flat area on his, on his, on his head. Uh, we're just trying to point out some of the things that brought us to this conclusion. It's definitely Frank. And uh, we believe this to be the last picture. So, that brings us back to the killer. Robert Ford, Dick Liddell, as we showed you earlier. Ford and the known. 
He loves his straw hats. Mm -hmm. There's a straw hat he has here three years earlier when he's about 15. Yes. Those are his two prize trophy killings. Uh, Woodson Hyde on the right, Jesse on the left. What were they thinking? Uh, who, who, it, it, can you just imagine? At the time, of course, he had no idea he would end up killing them both. No. But Neither did they. <laughs> of course. What a phenomenal picture, really. This yes. is a tintype. You're looking at the real deal here. Here is another picture of Jesse James while he was being admired by Ford. So probably had this picture taken and laughed about it. I think so. <laughs> but it's just incredible to see the attention Ford gave Jesse was insurmountable. He, he looked at him like he was a, a, a hero. A hero of some type. And then here we have Robert Ford after Jesse's murder. He traveled the whole United States putting on reenactments. Did he not? Yes, yes, he did. Okay, let's talk about this. Because during his reenactments, he would show how he killed Jesse James with a shot to the back of the head while he was dusting off a picture while he was up on a chair. Unarmed, too. Yes, unarmed. That's why they call him the coward. But like I said, I wouldn't want to have to pick the moment I was going to take face to face to, to, to take out someone like Jesse James, though. Uh, you know, if, had he missed or he misfired, Jesse would have killed him. Oh yes. And he he was playing with his life. That was that was still roulette. At any at any point, like in the movie, he was in fear for his life. Yeah. Always looking for that opportunity where he'd have an advantage. Well, he did take the advantage because Jesse took his belt off and laid it on the bed, and he, while he was, had his back turned, he shot him. And that's why they probably call him a coward, because he wouldn't take Jesse out face-to-face. -face. Well, who would go up against Jesse face-to-face, -face, armed? True. <laughs> so, this lady here is believed to be Dorothy Evans. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, the story goes, she was engaged to him while they were in Creedy, Colorado, during the last year of Bob Ford's life. This collection will prove to you that is not the case. She did travel with him. If that is indeed her name, we don't know. But they did marry. And they married within two years of the death of Jesse James. So this is a new thing that should be studied, should be talked about. I think Robert Ford's story should be a Hollywood movie. There's enough here to really ponder on. Uh, he became more popular, more widely known. His face was more recognizable than the president at the time of these 800-some-odd plays he put on. People threatened him constantly. Mm -hmm. Booed him, too, when he did the show. Sure. But there were those who didn't like him because they felt Jesse was just a bad guy. But here you are seeing the first time Robert Ford being married to the woman who toured with him. Mm -hmm. Now, this picture is really interesting. I'm not going to spend all day on it. But the Lois Gibson, who authenticated this Sandy Mills photo on the right has also authenticated our Wyatt Earp picture in another video we have running currently. If you're willing to take the time to look at it, she authenticated two pictures that we have of Doc Holliday, Wyatt Earp, and his whole family. Holliday's love interest, Kate Haroni, is in the picture as well. Nicholas Porter and his wife, Virginia, all the Earp brothers, sister, everybody's there, and, and a lot more. And all I can tell you is that Lois got it right with, with our picture, and she got it right with Sandy's picture. And the reason I say that is we have a picture of Ford early, probably within a year of age difference. And what do you think, Rachel? So take a good look at this picture. You can't miss. You can't miss it's it. It's a dead ringer. It, there's, there's nothing about it that throws me off. I, I Everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but right down to the shape of this eye, how it angles up here on this far right side. It and does here. Exactly. Perfect matches. Uh, Lois, kudos to you. You got it right. I, I had talked to the owner of this picture. He had zero competition. He would have went a lot higher from what I understood on the price. And uh, the reason why it didn't sell is because these expert auction houses didn't feel Lois got it right. Ask them why they didn't. They wouldn't uh, partake in this because a lot of them turned it down. And uh, it's shameful. Yeah. 
Uh, Very shameful. There's, there's no doubt. Congratulations to the owner. He got a great deal. I think it went for roughly 35000 and uh should have been quite higher. But this is what happens in America. People follow the money trail. If they can't make a buck on it somehow, they, they seem to push people with, with new pictures down. And I know a lot of it's garbage out there. There's a lot of garbage out there. But this particular collection that we have, as a, if you add Ford and Jesse James pictures together, we outdo 250 images. There's just no way we get it wrong. Moving along, we have... Um, Robert Ford getting older now. He wants to improve his image. He was not a career criminal. So for those of you who think he was a bad guy, unlike Jesse, he didn't shoot people on a regular basis. He didn't rob people on a regular basis at all. Once, once he, uh, after Jesse's death, he never killed again. He never stole again. He was a very good businessman, well respected by those who knew him. In the yes. communities he went to, he had saloons, he dabbled in horse racing. Yes. He was involved in anything that he could make a, make a, a buck at, and he did quite well for himself. He, he adopted that little girl there. Okay, he adopted Maud May. So you'll never see the presumed Dorothy Evans Ford here pregnant in any of our pictures, yet they have two children together. Yes. So they were adopted. And he wanted to improve his image. He got hate mail all the time. Yeah. He also got people who admired him. But in one of the years, somebody attacked him with a knife. Almost almost killed him. Almost slit his throat, but he fought him off. That was just one of the attacks he had to deal with physically. Mm -hmm. But again, he, he did receive a lot of mail, which would make you grow old fast. And always be on the lookout like that is really nerve-wracking. So this little girl, Maude May, is the first of their adopted children. And here they are again. Child's getting a little older. Once again, she, his wife's getting older. He's getting older. This is about when the touring concludes. And he's in business for himself. Another picture here. This picture here shows Robert Ford. Again, he traveled the United States with his wife. Mm -hmm. Great shot, would you say? Yes, it is a great shot. Very nice. Very clear. It is a nice shot of her. Beautiful. She was a lovely lady. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't confirm her name, but we're sure it's the same woman in each of these pictures. Again, this is all from one single source with an exception here or there, which I would point out if I come across one. Here's Robert Ford now. They took on what happened here. They picked up another child, Odie. Okay, baby Odie is now, is now part of the family. Again, Robert's starting to... Lose his hair? He loses his hair. He's starting to age. He's starting to become weathered. The threats were a lot. He's constantly on the move. He ends up in a, a, a town called Creedy. In Colorado, where he finally settles down and tries to make that home. Uh, so his two children here are to improve his image. Now, I, I took the time to look online. And maybe several years ago, somebody added Maud May Powell Ford to the... It's either Find a Grave or it's, it's Ancestry. It's one of those two sites. You can go to look at it. Um, daughter of Robert Ford, the man who shot Jesse James. Sister of Odie Watson. This says it all. This is real, people. Down here in the far left corner is a picture of, of Robert Ford with this notorious picture of him holding the, the forty five in his hand. The man who shot Jesse James. Uh, I can't make this up. I didn't do this. This is before I even found my collection. When I get when I get to the next picture, you'll see. Odie Watson Ford. They don't even know when she was born. We could probably narrow that down to within a year with these photos that we have. Uh, we'll probably have to add that 
see if uh, Vicki Moore is interested in adding that information and possibly the pictures of these children because we have several of them as they grow up. This is in a family album that belonged to the Fords. Incredible album they have. I mean, who would think that such a thing exists? But let's face it, why wouldn't it exist? Every family pretty much has a photo album. Yes, they do. And they, and they keep it for several years as the kids grow. That's what usually what at least the mother would do. So this or is grandparents. this is proof that what we're doing is right. Yes. And we hope you're enjoying this. If you are, please give us a thumbs up. This this was um, last updated in fifteen. This is two years before I even stumbled across this collection. So you can see I had nothing to do with this. Um, it's just what it is. Very proud to show it to you. We hope that somebody will take this up and, and be willing to write a book about it or, or even a movie. They're welcome to use the pictures if they contact us. All we want is the recognition that we found them. We want to get it out there. It's an incredible story, people. Now we're getting closer to his death. The year is 1888, based on the, ch the age of the children mm -hmm. who are now growing up. Mrs. Ford is starting to put years on. He's, a, he's about 28 years of age here. He's a, he's, a, he's a handsome man. He looks a lot like Charles Ford. I did a, I did yes. a, a side by side of him and Charlie, but and you can see the the look. He looked like Charlie did when he was older. Mrs. Ford again. She had a very extravagant lifestyle. She had the finest clothing. Uh, her husband Robert Ford was very successful. He didn't spare anything. He bought her everything she wanted. She had the latest fashions, latest jewelry. And uh, she ends up committing suicide because she's not really one for children by herself. And uh, she doesn't find anybody who can support her in the manner she's accustomed to anymore. For whatever reason, she jumped out of a building, I, I believe, and ended her life. Sad, tragic ending. So what do we have here, Rachel? Robert Ford and the wife. Yes. Dorothy Evans, presumably. You'll notice Robert Ford has lost most of his hair. Yes, he has. Same, got the same walrus mustache. I can tell you firsthand, being that I'm, my hair isn't much more than what he has. You lose it rather quickly. Yes. And this man was under tremendous stress. He was successful, but he was hated, and he had to deal with the threats and the constant Suicide bombers that wanted to take him out. Let's just say that. But here he is with his wife. One minute he's happy and alive. The next minute he's dead. Here he is. This is you are seeing Robert Ford for the first time. In post mortem. Post mortem. Ten years later, he died just about the same way Jesse James died. He as he turned to, to meet his uh assailant who said hello. Hello, Bob. As he was turning around, he was shotgun blasted in the chest and the neck. And the funny thing is, he knew his killer, too. Um, yes. At that time, Edward K. Bart O'Kelly never, never reported why he killed Robert Ford, never said anything of the sort that he knew him. But we have some new information for you here, which really, really turns this whole thing upside down. And this is this is Ford. I just put a, a comp in next to the man he killed, Jesse James. Now they're both deceased, very much in the same manner, killed by a gunshot. Here is Robert Ford and his wife in a morning a, a morning uh, amulet. Here, it's it's part of the collection. Like I said, whoever put this together really made it a life career. Yes, definitely. Did a fantastic job. I hope one day to figure out who it was. By the way, these all came out of, essentially, the seller who dropped these off at various booths um, in Ohio at, a, at an antique store, the biggest one in Ohio called Jeffrey's. 
the lady that I talked to was getting them from Jeffries in Ohio. When I when I got one back, it had a stamp on the back. It said booth number, whatever it was. And so I took my son and we hot footed it over to uh Ohio. The doors opened and we just had a a smorgasbord of, of uh outlaws. We bought everything they had, including the earth pictures. Um we're talking we didn't even know who we had, we who we were buying half the time. We just knew they were somebody. And we were we got them relatively cheap. No longer was I having to buy them back for for a hundred or two hundred or even a thousand dollars. I was buying them back for roughly a dollar or two dollars a piece. But I was I knew that I was putting this collection together, and I knew they all came from the same source. So whoever's out there who knows more about this, feel free to call. Let me know more about where they originally came from, who originally put this together. Uh, I know it's several years back now, but we believe we got 99% of them. Moving along here, and you'll see Robert Ford's funeral casket. And the inserted picture is on this 8x11 photograph. Uh, that's him as a police officer. Robert Ford was a constable for several years. He was on the right side of the law. Uh, went to the I don't know how many people know that. Well, this is after. This is after his killing of Jesse. Mm -hmm. He never returned to the bad side. That's the thing about him. He was not a career criminal. No, he wasn't. He was a good man, and he tried. He tried very hard to polish his image. This is the real kicker. This is Robert Ford and O'Kelly. So, the plot thickens. This shows that. Edward Capehart O'Kelly knew Robert Ford before the death of Jesse James. Now, how many people knew that? This picture is the bomb. It really shows that O'Kelly, very distinct feature with his connected ear and his, his uh, widow's peak, the veins on his hand. Again, I, I, challenge, I challenge the original pictures. You're going to find that he knew... Ford never said this, was never written about. He married into the family of the Youngers, and Jesse was someone he admired, as did Robert Ford at the time. So his anger stems from the fact that Ford killed an idol to this man and someone who was related to him through marriage. And, you know, they say that most murders aren't random sh shootings. Of course, people no. do get shot randomly. Um, but most murders are by somebody who they, the murderer, or the killer knows the, the victim and the victim knows the killer and there, there's some intimate reason why it took place. They were either cheated or something happened. And, uh, that's usually why people kill other people, as is the case here. This really explains a lot. I hope people look into this, take this very seriously. It's a great, great image of these two together. This is uh, O'Kelly, about the time he was arrested, just before, possibly. O'Kelly, once again, after he gets out of prison, f scuffles with a police officer, becomes unruly, ends up getting killed. This is the man who shot the man who shot Jesse James, Edward Capehart O'Kelly. And this is Maud. So this is uh, one of the little daughters of the Fords that were adopted. Maud, looks like she's... Uh, Coming out of probably First Communion, I don't know, something. And as we move along, we have... Odie and um, Odie Mrs. Ford. And Mrs. Ford, the presumed Dorothy Evans. Mm -hmm. uh, she wasn't very good with children. She never had any of her own, from what I can tell. And she commits suicide. Tragic. And that's Maude. No, Odie. That's Odie again. Odie, once again, uh, looks like she getting out of uh, a, a communion type of service. Yes. Very popular in Victorian times and even today. And this is Maude. Angelic. She's probably about 16 to 20 years of age here. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful girl. Mm-hmm. Of course, Ford is now long dead. And last but not least, this was be the presumed second husband of Mrs. Ford. Yes, we presume that Mrs. Ford had another love interest because this is in the family album. This is the last picture in the album. 
it's about 1899, maybe 1900, and basically, uh, she, he doesn't, I don't think that this person has the, uh, capabilities of giving her what she needs, her, her, uh, excessive spending, from what I can tell from other right. pictures I didn't show you, she had a very, uh, extravagant lifestyle she lived, let's say, she committed suicide, and basically the book ends here, so does our story. So we're very happy that you, you, you've seen this. Uh, the book, Historical Headstones, Volume 1, contains not only this, it contains the Earps, it contains... Sundance Kid. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, it contains... The Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid, yes, that's our last chapter. And, we got and about, Bonnie and Clyde, too. About 60 pictures on him, Bonnie and Clyde. We have the Dalton Gate. Mm, yes. Uh, we have a lot of pictures you're missing out on. We have... Like John King Fisher, the mysterious Dave Mather, David Rudabaugh. We have so many outlaws. It's it's worth the gander just to pick it up. We're not getting rich here. I'm self-published. Uh, I spent years of my life putting this together. If I sell a, a couple hundred copies, I'll be surprised. The thing is, though, I want it to be preserved. They're copyrighted. I want people to see that this does exist. This is truly belongs to the American heritage. People everywhere should know about these pictures. And I'm open to anybody who can add to these pictures. Any information you have, please contact us at historicalheadstones at AOL.com. And if you're looking to purchase the book, you'll only find it at Rachel Found It on Etsy.com. And if you like our video, please give us a thumbs up. We appreciate any thumbs up. Uh, I know it's Usually, if, if I watch the video, I don't always do it, but it is it is greatly appreciated. And we thank you for your, your patronage and, your, and the hour and a half you spend here. And if you think about it, it's a hell of a lot of information to take in at once. But you'll only find it here on YouTube. Have a great day, and thank you. God bless. Thank you. Bye.